This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So I was on the fretboard forum the other day and I, I found this thread about whether it might be the best time to play guitar and I just kind of wanted to do a video on that because at the moment this finger of mine is a little bit swollen from being pricked by a, a blackthorn um, on, on antibiotics but if I suddenly go AWOL for a few days that's probably what's happened, I've succumbed to bush. Um, but anyway... I think for a few reasons, probably this is going to be true, right? So I think more than ever, the gear that we have access to these days gives us the most options in terms of being able to find something that is suitable for wherever we're at. So across kind of the whole budget range, you know, whether you're spending very little money or quite a lot of money, there's been a sort of consolidation, I think, where... Some of the budget gear now, like a Boss Katana, uh, you know, Line 6 Catalyst, or, you know, name your favourite thing, which is sort of under £300, uh, you know, the new X gear. I think there's been this kind of thing where even the cheaper stuff, Podgo, is relatively inexpensive, I guess, is pretty decent and capable of getting some really really good tones um, and I'm not sure that that's been the case forever likewise that the budget or cheaper end of the guitar world you know same sort of thing you know I think please let me know your thoughts some of you guys that have more experience than me because obviously I've only been on this planet 34 years um, so what would I really know but what I read folks say is that the, the cheaper gear back in the day actually left a lot to be desired. 
although I have a 1980s Ibanez Roadstar 2 that I grew up playing, and I have quite fond memories of that. And I think Tokai were knocking out some really good stuff in the early 80s as well. So I'm sure there must have been some good gear around then as well. But I think that is the the, the thing that I hear from folks is that the guitars were not as consistent, um, particularly at the budget end of stuff. So let me know your thoughts on that if you've got any in the comments. Of course, the pedal industry has sort of ballooned from back then as well. Um, so we t we're talking sort of... 70s 80s where that kind of really picked up and to the point now where you can get very respectable sounding pedals that are clones of the way more expensive stuff for, for cheapest chips or you can buy boutique versions or whatever so there's more choice than ever before in terms of gear and not only that but I think we're in the spot right now with valve amps where if we want them we can get them I think that might not always be the case right what we hear from people like um you know people that know stuff like the what was it bob bradshaw i might have seen talking about this on dave friedman's podcast um you know the, the valves are getting a little bit trickier to get hold of and maybe some of that really expensive rack gear back in the day maybe that's not so reliable anymore and i think there's gonna be a time when it's less easy to get valves than it is now and i think certainly production now is smaller than it's been before right so at the moment right now, if you want to go and buy a valve amp, you can find them, right? You can find loads and loads and loads of, like, uh, even in the UK, sort of Fender Twins and bits and pieces, Marshall amps. Uh, I feel like, yeah, you can find them if you want them. And not only that, but, like, the modelling stuff is plentiful. Or if you want to open up to the, the plug-in world, there's so many options there as well. And they actually do sound good. For me, that's kind of my preferred workflow right now is working with plugins so I just play straight into the audio interface and then normally it's through Helix Native. Um, so technology and that stuff has really come on as well um, and to the point as well one of the things that I use most of all is native instruments so I use complete so that kind of I can use for like string sounds like you heard in this I used Jacob Collier's uh, choir thing so the technology is allowing these kind of bonkers things but Jacob Collier over the two year Jesse tour I, I think basically recorded the audience choir segments that he did and with native instruments put it together into this cool choir thing but all of like the, the sampled instruments in the native instruments world I, I really love um, I used drums from there as well. I used uh, synth basses from there. You're kind of able to do a lot of crazy things and you think back in time, loads of that wasn't possible. Um, so I think in terms of if you've got some creativity or you want to create something, it's never been more possible to do something kind of in your bedroom and make it sound pretty decent. Whether or not people are actually doing that as much is kind of up to subjectivity, I guess. But technology as well as a as a point from learning guitar so when I grew up I was learning guitar from a cassette player or a CD player that was basically what I used to play along with most of the time I think that was really kind of good for me in terms of ears and stuff like that but might not be the quickest route to certain things and these days I could have jumped up onto YouTube watched lessons with various people um, found players quicker than I did with my actual route um, maybe I would have listened to, to more Steve Ray Vaughan, more Jimi Hendrix and stuff like that. The fact was that back in the day when I was doing stuff, you had to go out and physically buy a CD to do any of that sort of stuff. These days, kind of with things like Spotify, YouTube and whatever, you can basically you have access to endless libraries of music basically for free. There is advertising and stuff like that, but... You know, the fact that I could go and listen to Beethoven, Mozart, Elgar, as well as, you know, Guthrie Govan, watch lessons, all that sort of stuff is pretty incredible, as well as, like, the, the stuff behind a paywall that back in the day maybe it would have been... I don't know, what were these teachers doing? Maybe they were making hot licks videos at some point. Um, but before that, I guess there was just a bunch of knowledge that was only written down in books and stuff like that, but these days stuff like Truefire exists who sponsor this channel but I do think that's actually a really valuable resource they're actually running a promo at the moment you could use 
to get all access pass if you want access to all of their stuff um, that teachers on there like Eric Johnson, Andy Timmons, um, you know, players that I think the world is better for having them kind of teaching stuff online. And the same goes for a bunch of uh, YouTube channels and, you know, stuff like Tom Bukovac making videos, I think is a really cool thing that we wouldn't have had back in the day. And we now can start to see things like Steve Lucas talking to Rick Beato and stuff like that. And I think we get to see what goes through the minds of some of these players in a way that written interviews didn't come across quite so well to me um, in some ways. So technology, access to sounds and music and stuff like that, access to, to what's come before, access to lessons and teaching, all improved. Things like Skype and Zoom, if you want to, you know, get together with your favorite players in the world. A lot of them are still kind of offering Zoom and Skype lessons, which is pretty incredible as well. Um, the negative is I think it's not that easy to actually earn money playing guitar as it used to be. I think basically function musicians and pub musicians and all that stuff, uh, the, the rates and wages have kind of gone down over time, not up, and inflation, of course, has gone up. So I think that's the one negative, and maybe it's more difficult to get big than it used to be although I think there is a, still an ability to kind of build yourself up to a certain level if you're slogging away hard enough but I think in general it's a positive time I think let me know your thoughts in the comments I guess the very final point is that even if it is not the best time to play guitar it is now like the only time we've got to play guitar so you might as well get on with it um, and I think maybe that person that did feel like they were in the golden age would end up feeling more positive about things in general than someone who thought that better days had gone. So let's um, imagine it's the best times ever.